All right, let's review a couple other Composition API gotchas. So let's do this. In my home view, let's create a big text area that maybe we will enhance. All right, let's have a look. So if I switch to the browser, yeah, here's what we get. So real quick, let's do this. Pardon the inline styling, but I'll say width is 100% and height is maybe 300 pixels. Okay, so now imagine you're building something like a comment form, but maybe it doesn't justify a full dedicated WYSIWYG. Instead, you just want some nice to haves. Like maybe if you're entering HTML, you should be able to hit the tab key to indent your code. But yeah, notice right now when I do it, it tabs away from the text area. Maybe that would be useful. Okay, so a simple enough example, let's create a component using the Composition API to make that work. Okay, so if you try to research this yourself, you might come across a Reddit thread that shows something resembling this. And you know what? This may look a little confusing, but it's really not. I've added some comments to make it clear. So assuming we have a text area uh, node, listen for when the user presses a key, and then we check to see what well, was the tab key pressed. If so, let's figure out exactly where the caret is in the text area. So we do that by getting everything you typed into the text area, and then we figure out where the cursor or the selection starts and where it ends. And then we update the value of the text area to be everything leading up to the cursor and then a tab because you press the tab key. So we want that to be displayed and then everything uh, after the selection. And then last but not least, we call event.prevent default because as we saw just a moment ago, the default behavior is to tab away from the text area, but we don't actually want that in this case. So let's prevent that default behavior. Okay, so yeah, this is something you might uh, prepare, but let's figure out how we can integrate it into a component. So the first step is, well, we need some kind of text area. All right, well, we have one here. So let's start by giving it a ref and we'll just call it text area, simple enough. And then let's create that up here. Let text area equal a ref. All right, and this is pretty cool. If you ever want to access a specific element or DOM node in your template, just give it a ref, provide any name you want, and then create a variable that's equal to a null ref. So yeah, if we take a look at this real quick, uh, console, actually this might trip you up. So real quick, if I were to say console.log text area dot value, uh, I think that's probably going to be null. So let's open up console and yeah, give it a refresh and that's equal to null. And that's because at the point we, we logged that, the text area hasn't yet mounted to the page. So you can see if we actually delay that one more time, there it is. So now if we dig down, we do have access to the text area. So yeah, otherwise, if you need to use it, you could say, well, listen for on mounted. So yeah, when we were using the options API, we would just create a method on that object called mounted. But remember with the composition API, we are importing all of the options we require basically, including hooks like mounted. Okay, so now if I were to console.log text area dot value, at this point, the text area has mounted to the page. So if we clear this out, refresh, yeah, now I do have access to it. And yeah, it can get a little tricky here with dot value uh, because it's a form element. I would have to do something like this dot value dot value to grab the, the actual value of the text area. A little tricky there. But anyways, let's get back to work. So the next step is to figure out how to make all of this work. First up, as we discussed, we should use text area dot value to access the node. Next, I only want to listen for a key down event after the component has mounted. So I will bring back on mounted and paste that in. Next within here, and just for a moment, let's just create a, a quick variable that is text area dot value. And that way I can update all of this. Okay, so yeah, one step at a time, hide the sidebar, switch back, and let's see if it works. Div tab, oh, and it's working. Hi there, not too shabby. What about if I want to indent this word here? Yep, it's working. I think we're in business. Maybe we accept markdown, one, two, and you want a nested list, tab, three, four, it works. Okay, so the next step is to clean this up. 
So first, instead of manually calling add event listener, I could instead, if we scroll down, do it here. Listen for a key down event. And then why don't we create a method called on key down. Okay, so now we can create that. Uh, let's begin by removing the on mounted hook. And then I could grab all of this here and wrap it within a function called on key down, which will accept the event. Okay, and I'll paste that in. Okay, so now we can get rid of the add event listener because we're already doing that at the point we call this function. And yeah, that's step two. So let's see if this still works. And it does. Cool. What else can we do? Step three. Hmm. What about this section here where we look at the key code that was pressed? Nine refers to tab. But actually, if we want, instead I could say, listen for a key down. And then I'm going to add this modifier called tab. And as you can imagine, there's modifiers for, for most of the keys you would, you would press, like enter or, or backspace or things like that, control. Okay, so now I will only call on key down if the user presses the tab key, which means I can get rid of this as well. All right. And in fact, on key down is no longer quite right. Why don't we say on tab press? And we'll update the function. All right, let's make sure it still works. One more time, hi there, yeah, everything is still working. Cool, a little bit better. Next, what about this section down here where we prevent the default action? Well, if I were to remove that, don't forget, as soon as we tab, the default behavior uh, reactivates and it tabs me away from the text area. Okay, well, we could add it there, but we could also do it down here again. We can chain these, so dot prevent. It's kind of cool. Listen for a key down, specifically the tab key, and as part of that, prevent the default uh, behavior for that particular event. Um, another option, if you want, is we don't actually need a ref here. So have a look at this. We could listen for the key down event and call tab press. And then within here, we could, of course, grab the text area by saying e.target. So give me the target of the event. And if I'm pressing the tab key within a text area, the target of the event is the text area node. So we could just as easily access it like this. And then maybe we can rename this t variable to uh, text area. Yeah, and actually we don't listen for a mounted hook either. So now we just have a simple function. Does it still work? div hi there, and yes it does, it works. Very cool. All right, so yeah, this is looking pretty good. I can now remove the comments. And you know what, if this is the only place we needed this behavior, I would probably just keep it here. But yeah, maybe if you want to use it elsewhere in the project, the next step is to extract a dedicated component. So we'll do that now. In my components directory, we'll create a new one. And why don't we call it, uh, well, not just text area. What is unique about it? Uh, tabable, it's a tabable text area. All right, so let's switch back. We'll cut the text area out and move it over to our template. Next, we need our on tab press function. So I will move that over as well. There we go. This is script setup. Uh, next, just a quick little note in terms of the order, whether template or script is on top, it's kind of a personal preference thing. Uh, traditionally, the template was at the top, but I think you may find um, lately in recent, in recent years, people tend to put the script at the top. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. Do whatever you like most. Okay, what next? Uh, of course, we don't want a default value and we don't want to hard code the width and height. We should pass that in from the outside. All right, so let's switch back to the home view. We can now import our tabable component. So what is it? Components, tabable text area. Okay, and now I can use it here. And yeah, if I wanted to, I could paste in any custom styles here. Don't forget, when you pass any attributes that aren't props to a custom component, they will basically cascade down to the root element of that component. All right, so let's see if this is working. Give it a refresh. And yeah, now we have our tabable text area, but notice it does receive the uh, style. And yeah, if you want, if we want to take a look, notice right there, that is our tabable text area. Cool. So does it still work? Yes, it does. But now we've abstracted away all of the logic 
uh, to make that tapping work. The last step though is to make this a little more flexible. So for example, what if I wanted to add a V model to it? I wanna track the value of this text area. And maybe this text area is for a comment. Okay, so let's see if we can make this work. Let comment equal a ref that defaults to an empty string. Or actually, let's give it a starting value, test value. Okay, so if we did everything right, the initial value for this tabbable text area should be test value, but it won't be. So if I switch back and give it a refresh, nope, we're not doing anything with that. Okay, well, we actually discussed how to make vModel work with custom components a number of episodes ago, but let's do a little recap. The first step is to define a prop. So again, with the options API, you would just create a props object, and we learned about using that key model value. But instead, when we're using script setup, we're gonna use this macro here, define props, and we'll do it here. And what we pass here, this object is exactly the same object that you would have passed in the options API. Okay, so model value, and that will be of type string. Okay, so now at the very least, we have access to the initial value. Come back, let's open up view, go down to our tabbable text area, and yeah, notice model value is accepting uh, that string. The next step is to, of course, use it. Okay, well down here, we could say, let's make this uh, self-closing, and then I can say v text equals model value. All right, does that work? Yes, it does. But now what about the reverse? When I type into it, I wanna update to that. And of course, right now, we're not doing that. So once again, yeah, that's not working. Okay, and again, all of this should be a recap from a number of episodes ago. The next step is to listen for when the user types and emit an event. This is how we keep the two in sync. So let's do another one here. When you lift up a key, why don't we call a method update? And then I will probably inline this function, but one step at a time. All right, we'll create a function update, and this needs to emit an update event. So when we were working with the options API, yeah, we did something like this, where it takes the shape of update, the name of the uh, property, the default is model value, and then we give it whatever the, the string is here. In this case, we could do something like E, and that would be the value of the text area, right? But yeah, when we're in script setup, we can't do this dot emit. So yeah, this is another case with script setup where we're, we're doing the same thing, but it's a little bit different in terms of how we prepare it. So we're going to define our emits, or in other words, the, the events that this component will emit. And in this case, if this is the event name, we'll pass it in up here. And yeah, this is generally considered a good practice. Uh, we haven't yet reviewed this, but for any, any events that your components will emit, um, it's optional, but it's a good practice to declare them here. Okay, so now that will return to us an emit function that we can then call like this. Scroll on down, and all we do is change this like so. Emit, we give it the name, and everything should be the same here. Okay, so let's see if this works. We come back, let's open up view. Our tabbable text area is working, but on home view, comment is set to test value, All right? Now if I change it, aha, there we go. We're keeping the two in sync. That's what we want. So yeah, a little bit confusing. This is one of the more confusing parts of uh, working with view components, but trust me, once you understand it, you'll have this. So now our model value is updated and the comment is as well. And you'll see if I switch over to the events tab, yeah, notice as I type in here, uh, we're firing all of these component events or component level events. And don't forget, I just wanna make this crystal clear. This syntax here, it needs to be this. So you can't just say anything you want, update model value. No, it needs to take this exact shape. Okay. Um, next, if you want, we talked about this, we could inline this entirely. So I could just do that instead, if you'd like to get rid of a function, and that would be fine. And uh, yeah, I'll let you take a look at this. Here is our simple component. To allow for vModel, we define a prop with a name of model value. Next, we define our emits 
with update model value, which is required to make a V model on custom components work. Next, we have a single function that will handle a tab press. And remember, any variables or functions you declare in script setup will always be available in your template. And then next, we register just a, a handful of events. Uh, and notice real quick, we, we split up key down and key up because if we want to prevent um, the tab key sending you away from the text area, we couldn't do that with key up. It would need to be done as part of key down. So that's why we do that. But next, after you've pressed a key and we key up, we can uh, omit the, the new value of the text area. And I think that'll do it. So yeah, if we were to test this out, I often do set timeouts just to make sure everything's in sync. Maybe after two seconds, let's set comment uh, dot value to it works. Yeah, hopefully this should all work. Give it a refresh. One, two, and everything is in sync. And now you have a slightly enhanced text area. Pretty cool. So the key things to learn in this lesson is the necessity for these little custom little compiler macros, whatever you want to call them. One for defined props and one for defined emits. And remember, those are only accessible within script setup. Once everything is compiled down, these will be replaced behind the scenes. So again, to say it two times, you can only use these within script setup.